Afternoon, everyone. Captain Carl Burtside here, Thumbs Up Charter Services, with yet another episode of Thumbs Up Charter Services behind the scenes. Today, we're going to be doing the final thing we need to do to this trailer on the Ambrose, and that is put on some new trailer lights. Now, I know you're all going, oh, man, trailer lights. If anyone's ever owned a trailer, they can be a real pain in the butt. You might say, they have a tendency to be like a flaming pack of hemorrhoids just when you think you got the situation or problem beat they come back with a vengeance with all kinds of problems so today we're going to show you a couple of steps you could take to make that situation hopefully alleviate itself and at least give you you know several good years of, of use out of your trailer lights so the next time you plug it in after winter you know you're looking and now the lights are on you know that won't happen to you okay and uh, you know what? I think it ought to be a, another riveting session. All kinds of excitement. You might say it might even be a shocking experience. So stay tuned. Hopefully you enjoy it. And we're going to get right to it right now. All right. So our trailer's here. Harness has to go up here, the pigtail that runs to the vehicle. We've got to leave about 18 inches out of the harness for that when we put it in. But we'll feed the new harness in through the tongue of the boat. And right here is where our connections are made. It splits down the trailer. We have wiring down this side and then on the other side, wiring down the other side. The only two markers we have on this trailer, these amber markers right here, look how long this trailer is. So at night, we really need to have another marker, amber marker here and on the other side, which we're going to install. And then back here, <coughs> we're going to have new tail lights. New taillights that mount right there to that bracket. And then over here on this guide post, we're going to put another red marker back here. Give us some more brightness back here for the width of the trailer. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use these guide posts. We're going to reuse them. They're in good shape. We're going to clean them up. Okay, but there's one on each side of the trailer to guide the boat on, as you can see. And uh, we're going to install a light kit, an LED light kit on the top of these. It's made by C.E. Smith Company. And the front half of this is amber. The rear half of this is red. So when we install these on the top of the guide post, we'll have to wire, put the wiring down there. But uh, we slide them on like that, screw them in. The rear half is red facing the back of the vehicle, the front half is amber. And when you're going down the highway, the added benefit is you can see these in each of your rear view mirrors. So at night, you always know if your running lights are working by simply taking a quick glance backwards in the left or right rear view mirror. And uh, just a little added benefit, but also brightens the trailer up even more. And they come in a kit. What do I do with the box? It's up here. Come in a kit. They're sold in pairs. Uh, C.E. Smith LED lights for post uh, guide post uh, systems on boats. Part number 27656A. They, this kit cost me like 31 bucks, and I've been running these for a long time, over a decade, on some of my trailers, and they work just fine. And there's the name of the company right there in case you want to look them up. You can find them at cesmith.com. Trailer wiring is pretty standard these days, um, with exceptions, I'll explain that in a minute. But your running lights run off of a brown wire. Your right side, where we are, turn and brake is going to run off of a green wire. On the other side, <clears throat> you're again going to have a brown wire for your running lights, which is that one. And that, or that one, and then you'll have a yellow wire, as you can see there, for your left turn and brake light. Okay, and what I mean by typically standard is here is the harness, electrical harness that came with this light kit. It's a four wire, what we call four wire flat. So it's a flat bar connector with four pin terminals. The one that's exposed is your ground, which is the white wire. Your running lights on the trailer are fed by the brown wire. Your left turn and brake is the yellow. And your right 
turn and brake is that green. So that came in the same kit as these lights, which are LED. Didn't used to endorse LEDs a lot. I am now. They've got way better at sealing these boxes and preventing them from shorting out, and the prices come way down. This manufacturer is pretty much the standard manufacturer I use. It's like a knockoff brand. They've worked pretty well for me. We got four amber lights, side markers we're going to put in. The two uh, red side markers for the rear of the vehicle we're going to put on those guide posts in the back. And then, of course, the two tail lights. And we're going to add what the vehicle doesn't have now, a center lower light underneath the boat to brighten it up. So, you know, you look at the wiring here, white, brown, yellow, green. The kit comes with tail lights with white, red, black. These have got red and black. This one's yellow and black. And then this lower running light has three wires coming out, out of it, which makes me think that that's probably a ground. That's probably a brake light feature if you're using this on left or right of a vehicle, and this would probably be your running light. So we got to determine this, and we're going to do that in a minute, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it would be nice if they just kept the wiring color standard, but they didn't. All right, so what we got a situation here is no instructions with these lights, which is really nice of them. We got to figure out which is power and ground. Simply take a 9 volt battery. These have, you know, very low milliamp to it. You're not going to hurt anything, generally speaking. Take a 9 volt battery and light these up and figure out what's positive and negative. Large terminal on 9 volt is negative, small terminal is positive. Take one of your lights, such as this one. If I can get it here for you. Okay, so it's definitely telling me that the, the, the black is the ground because if I go backwards to that and put on the positive, it don't work. So the red is positive, black is negative. Let's take a look at these. Let's try it again, black here, yellow there. Yep, that works. So black again is negative on that. Now for these lights, what you're gonna wanna do, turn this maybe so you can see it light up, hopefully. I suspect that the white is ground. This is my guess, it might be black. But put the white to ground, nope, that ain't it. So I guess maybe the black is ground on these. Again, that's odd. So, yep, there we go. Okay, so that's your brake light. Now, the way I know that is it's dimly lit because it's 9 volt battery, but I'm not getting any action over here. If I had action over here and here, that would be my running lights, okay? So that's your brake circuit. Wow, that's weird. And white? Wow. Okay. Let's have a sail on wire. White is your running lights because now I got lights on both sides, okay? Then for this, I guess knowing that, um, I'm going to say that this thing probably lights equally on two of these wires, and it's probably one's for running light, the other one's for a brake light application, but seeing how we're putting this in the middle of the trailer, we're only going to run one of these just to light the thing up. I don't need a brake light back there, so I'm going to try black for ground. That ain't it. White for ground? Oh, look at that. Okay, so there's one. Looks like an average brightness. Let's look at this one. And again, an average brightness. So, all right, on this particular one, they couldn't even be consistent within their own kit. White instead of black is the ground. And then these two um, are used for tail and for brake. So, gotcha. Well, now that we know that, Another issue is, in these kits, they're going to provide you these things. They're affectionately called, sometimes people refer to them as scotch locks. I don't know where the name came from, but you basically feed one wire into this thing without skinning it, and then put your second wire in, and then crimp this down with some pliers, and it skins the wire and makes contact. Then you put this piece of plastic over to cover this blade so it doesn't short out. You should only ever use these in an emergency situation. There's no protection here uh, for moisture. You know, in six months, you're gonna have trailer light problems. So I don't use those at all. What I use <clears throat> is crimp and, and sh shrink wrap connectors such as this. And as you can see, you, you, you put the wires in here and you crimp them 
and then you take some heat from a lighter or from a small torch and you heat and shrink this tube onto the wiring and it, it basically seals it from all the outside moisture. I like to add a little bit of dielectric grease just to the strands of the wire very lightly before I put them in here and do that and that gives even added protection because anytime you use dielectric grease on copper anytime you keep oxygen away from the copper you don't get corrosion and you don't get electrical problems so anything on a trailer if you don't want a problem make sure it's you spend a little money and get the crimp and shrink type connectors they work great I use them on the boat too because they're good for vibration and moisture the whole shot and I mean we're running hundreds and hundreds of hours on our boats we don't need some piece of junk like this to come apart 15 miles out okay so now that we know all of that um, we will get into the mounting of the lights and I'm gonna tell you right now you're gonna to want to basically throw out these screws they give you usually in the kits are pretty cheesy that's a headache and a problem go get yourself some nice stainless screws makes a way better job and these holes really should be pre-drilled and then you put the screws in by hand and not with a screw gun because you'll crack and break these and you're going to be really upset when that happens so one last thing i guess i got to mention here i forgot on the other video was let me get you cranked up here and get this thing off there we go we're only going to use part of this harness and the reason that is is i've checked the wiring going down the sides of the frames here and it's in good shape it's old but it's in good shape so we're going to reuse it but the wiring from here at about this light where it all connects up this way somebody over the years has i think put in what looks like a piece of extension cord and we got to get rid of that and put a standard harness back so we're going to put a new pigtail and use probably, I don't know, 10 or 10 or 12 feet of the wiring in the harness back here to where we can connect it to the existing trailer wiring. All right, <clears throat> so we've uh, undone one of the trailer lights here on the right side. And as you can see, we have some advanced electrical work that's been done to this. We have, well, duct tape. And uh, what a fine job that was. And then some extra wire of some kind put in here. But being on the right side of the trailer, you can see the green wire here and the brown wire here. Uh, looks like it goes up the tongue a little bit uh, before it becomes the uh, electrical extension cord wiring, I think it is, that we're going to replace. And uh, the other side, <clears throat> pretty much the same thing. Enjoy the Harley. Um, we have some type of electrical tape again. This was just broken off, so it wasn't even powering any of the running lights that way, which makes sense because I was having problems with those when I brought it home. And then we have the yellow wire here on the left side of the trailer, which is your turn and break, turn and break. And then we have the brown wire here that would be for your running lights. Okay, right, right in there. So yeah, I mean, um, what we're gonna do is Next is feed a um, piece of mechanics wire up this tongue towards the front of it. Once we pull that wiring out, and we'll get that mechanics wire to come out the front here. And that way, we can uh, get this length of new trailer harness that I have cut with its new pigtail uh, fed in through the front of the trailer tongue down to that those spots I was showing you where the trailer wise out just to note that the uh, trailer side of the wiring is the one with the three exposed connectors on it the shielded one within rubber is the ground and then the mating part on the vehicle because we don't want it to short out in the vehicle is all the power plugs are rubber shrouded and then the ground is actually exposed so that's the that's the vehicle end of it we're not going to use that because ours is already good so we've pulled out the wiring that was in the tongue back this way through that hole right there and what you can see is we have the uh, left side of the trailer yellow and brown right side of the trailer uh, green and brown wiring that is coming out duct tape and all those things there 
And then all of a sudden it transitions about halfway up this tongue to an extension cord. How about that? With duct tape, of course. Fine job. So we've ripped all this out. Our next step is to take that piece of mechanics wire or length of it, feed it in through this hole all the way up here. Have it come out the front. We're going to attach the end of our new wiring harness with some tape. Pull it up and through all the way down to the point where we can do some surgery down here to the existing trailer wiring, which was not harmed um, in either side of the trailer and, and hook it up color coordinated like it should be All right, so what I've done is I have a piece of mechanics wire here right here And fit up through the hole on the left side of the trailer because I chose this side because the brake line comes out on the other side And it's a little bit more room And I've pulled it all the way up the tongue of the trailer with use of a wire snake kit it's a flexible piece of fiberglass uh, adjustable length <clears throat> uh, device that you can add links to it it's got a hook on the end as you can see and I put a loop on it I push the red rod down the tongue to that hole where I can see it then I attached with a loop the mechanics wire to it and I simply pulled it through tongue of the trailer so we can hook our wiring harness ends onto that and pull it back through with the mechanics wire all the way down there. Then what I've done is once we get this new wiring harness out this hole, I left a cross section piece of the old harness across to the other side right here. See. So I can attach the green and the brown section of this and pull it back through the trailer, through the hole on the other side to connect it to the other side. Work smart, not hard. On to our next step. Removing the, the chase tool, fiberglass chase tool here, or fish tape, they might call them. Here's our wiring fish tape or mechanics wire down the tongue of the trailer, I've made a loop. I'm going to take both the wires that need to go down there and I'm going to put them through the end of that mechanics wire and I'm going to loop them over like this. Okay, a couple inches. And then we're going to take some electrical tape and we're going to tape the whole thing together to hold it together as it goes down the trailer tongue. I'm going to tape her up good and when you're done leave yourself a little extra, do yourself a favor fold the tape over and make a tab so you can pull this off when you get done with it on the other side. Alright, so now we'll go to the other end of the trailer down under the boat, pull this whole rig through Simply start pulling on your harness. She might get caught in a couple places. You gotta help it out to get it started. Now the tongue. Don't want to pull it loose after all this hard work. You just want to pull it through. And we'll just keep pulling this through to we see wire. And we're getting close, I think. There it is. There's our wiring. All right, so now what we're gonna do is undo the tape right here. The little tab we made from the mechanics wire where we pulled it through the tongue. We're gonna take the mechanics wire off, like so. We're gonna leave the yellow wire on the left side of the trailer. This green and brown has to go back through to the other side. So we're going to attach it to this old green and brown. Let me get it up here. We attached this old green and brown that I left over to the other side, so we just simply pull it through. We'll go get some tape. 
And we'll take just a couple of seconds. Always want to make these um, transitions when you're pulling wire smooth as possible so they don't grab on anything. And then you don't you want to put enough tape on that whatever you're doing it to doesn't pull loose halfway through the frame or whatever wall or whatever you're doing. And again, leave a little leave a little tab at the end so you can pull this off easily when you get through. So. Go over the other side and we'll pull this through. Alright. So you pull this through. Trailer frame. There you go. So now you got your new green and brown over where you can connect it to the existing trailer wiring on this side. You got your yellow and brown over there where you can connect it to the existing yellow and brown wiring going down the trailer that way to the back of the trailer on that side. And again, we're gonna do that um, here shortly once we get the new lights in on either side here because we're gonna have to tie in a brown wire to each of those lights to power them. So we're on the right-hand side of the trailer. Here's our existing wiring that goes down to the tail lights that way to the back of the trailer can't see it because it's pretty old but there's there's green here and the brown we got the green and the brown here what we're going to do is I'm actually going to give a little bit more length to this because we're going to add some lights down here and I'm going to have to snake or pull this harness down underneath the bottom of the frame to do some connections put it back up so we need a little more length here always a good idea to give yourself a little bit so what I'm going to do is give this some length I'm going to cut it here and then the next thing we need to do is on the brown, I need to make a short pigtail to hook up this new marker light here too to give it some slack so this can go down there. So I'll cut about an equal length off of that. Okay. Take your diagonal cutters, split the end of the wire between the two so you can pull it apart. Do the same here. Let's go in there and clip and grab it with your fingers pull apart so you can work on them and this one's already spread so the way it's supposed to work is green to green brown to brown and that's I mean I showed you the lights they're all different colors but you know wherever we can mark set this up all right we're gonna use our wires our wire uh, skinners here to expose some copper okay and uh, where we can set this up and keep the colors the same always a good idea Unfortunately, some of the manufacturers now are not keeping with this color code, but for lights and things. But I guess that's just the way the world is. Then we got our short power supply here to our amber marker light. We're going to do the same thing there. We're just going to take some insulation off on either end of that. Whoops. Well, it's kind of got a piece in there. Insulation in there. There we go. Okay. So let's see here, we're going to hook all the browns together, one, two, and three, all right, we're going to use our shrink, crimp and shrink connector, let me go get some uh, dielectric, because I have to put a little dielectric on that copper wire like I told you, just a little bit, okay, comes in a little squeezy can. Take a little bit of dielectric out, like that, on your finger. Give the wires a little dose before you crimp them. So we'll do that like that. Get your crimping tool. Give it a squeeze. Done. Okay. Your other side. Right here. Oops, wrong color wire. Green with green. Put it together like that. 
Now this wire is pretty thin. Um, it's gotten thinner and thinner over the years. So if you notice, I put them all on one end. All right, that's so that I get a good connection and a good bite when I crimp it. Which I'm gonna there, a little more dielectric on there. Slam the connector home. And then what I do is I heat the other end that I don't have a wire in and I just simply close the insulation off to keep water out. But at least I got a really good tight connection here because this wire is so thin. They make smaller connectors than this, right? They're pink, but <clears throat> for diameter, for smaller wire, but it works just as well this way. Take your torch, and you can use a way smaller torch than this. I gotta set this one way down. But then you just heat until that shrink wrap starts going. You see a heat here, and I gotta be really careful of this because you burn yourself, because this stuff gets pretty hot. But you shrink down the ends you aren't using, in this case, which I'm not. A pinch of closed, okay, and that is hot. It's like hot grease right there. Wow! But so there you have it. I'm in pretty good shape on this, and that'll keep the water out and keep going down the road. Now the next step we gotta do is drill a hole here for the wiring and the new light to come through because the old one fed out the bottom, but the new one goes out the back. I guess I'll reuse one of these holes here. The new LEDs are so small compared to the old incandescent ones. Probably the other hole will end up here, but there'll be a wiring feed hole here, and we'll get that drilled in just a second here. All right, so we got our hole drilled here. Two holes. We'll mark it, carefully mark it, and drill them. Our wires through here. So we're just going to put our light up like that. Put our screws through here. Found some nice stainless screws. They're a little bit long, but we got a ton of room back here to work with. So we're going to run with it. Shouldn't be an issue. There's one started. And the other started. Kind of, sort of. And get these in here. For me, doing a project like this, if I got extra stainless around, like these screws, I'm going to use them. Got a lot of extra stainless hardware from doing bolt projects. So I just kind of dump through my box of leftovers and see what I got, you know. There we go, right? So two wires. The yellow is our power. The black is our ground. We're using the trailer frame as a ground. So we're gonna to have to put a ring on this and clean off some paint and get that uh, put into the frame itself to provide a ground. The yellow is going to have to go onto this brown wire. And we're gonna do what we just did before, which is skin the wire. Brown, remember, is our trailer ring lights. It runs our lights, or our running light circuit, as you might call it. Puts the two together. Got a little dab of dielectric grease on them. Just a little bit. Get your shrink tube connector firmly in place. Give them a crimp. Good to go. Heat it up. Ah, come on now. Get her good and hot. Not too hot to burn the wiring. Just enough to shrink tube it, pinch the end off, remember it's extremely hot, hot glue, burn, wear a glove, do something, in fact don't do it, how about that, this is just me, not you, alright, she'll cool down, she'll be in good shape, this one we're going to have to put a ring eyelet on, so we're going to do the same thing, I'm going to skin it, pull off the insulation, and form the wire here. Get some dielectric on it. 
get a shrink ring terminal put it on now a lot of guys might want to run a whole separate ground wire to each of these lights all the way down the trailer and you're welcome to do that this is the very best way to do it I've never found it to be a problem to do it this way so that would 100% assure instead of using a trailer frame that you got a good ground for basically ever for your trailer lights and if you do that kudos to you There we go. All right, so we got the light mounted. We'll push these down the frame so I have some slack. And we will mount this somewhere in here. We'll find a ground here in a minute. All right, so what we've done here <clears throat> is we drilled a hole with a self tapping screw. They call it tech screw. See that? I like using these because they got a rubber washer on the back side of them. Kind of seals and help keeps the water out. But what we'll do is install this ground wire for this marker light right here. I've cleaned the area with a brush to get the paint off so it's clean metal. And we'll put the screw in here in the hole and and to see how that washer runs out, squishes around that. Right there. And keep the water out of that. No other work need to be needed. Done. Rubber washer squishes, keeps all the water out. You got good contact from your ground to the frame because you've cleaned the metal underneath. Should be all along a long way, go a long way like that. One thing about these lead lights, they draw literally milliamps not like your incandescents it could draw you know a half amp or quarter amp or maybe an amp depending if it's a tail light or not or stop turn if you got a decent ground a reasonably decent ground over the years these things will work whereas an incandescent you need a really 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 good ground and that's half the problem these trail lights you lose ground on them so that's just another advantage to going led all right, so that light is, that amber light's hooked up here. And uh, we're going to repeat that process for the other three amber lights here. So we're not going to show you all the detail on that because it's the same thing. Probably show you some of the detail down here to our left where we got to put the new lights in through the frame that don't have an existing light. Remember, we're going to add two amber lights and we got to fish that, we got to drill some holes and fish that. Uh, wiring harness out of the frame so we can connect it to the light and then back in so we'll show you that detail but um, beyond that it's just going to be several other lights let's go up here to the front on the trailer hitch real quick and I'm going to show you the process for what we did back there on that ground make it, maybe make it a little bit more clear but you can see I got a spot there that is paint's ground off. I use one of these rotary files, clean it with my 3 8 electric drill. Get this stuff out of the way so I can work. And uh, the next step that we're going to do is uh, we're going to take one of those Tex screws and uh, they're self tappers so we'll make a hole there. But hopefully this detail will be a little bit easier for you to see if I can stay out of the way why I like using them. So we'll go right in the middle of the spot where I cleaned. Okay. Leave that there for the moment. Then we've got to, oh boy, I've got this on top of my pliers. Hold on, I'm going to readjust you here. There you go. I'm going to take my white ground wire, which traditionally is white, um, on trailer wiring harnesses, but we found it on other products that be all kinds of different things. We're going to clip off the end real quick. Okay. And then we're going to put some dielectric grease on the end of it. And I just, like I say, I just, I just need a little bit on the wire itself. 
Okay, we got that on there. And then we will put our new connector on it. Grab our crimping tool. Crimp it like that. Heat it up. Heat it up to do the shrink wrap. Close. Kind of like that. Let it cool. Take our screw out. Come on. Put it on in. Put it in the frame. And this is the main ground for the entire trailer to the vehicle. See how that rubber washer squishes around that to keep the moisture out of it. Works really nice. Gets that connection right against the frame where we cleaned it to the bare metal. And we'll bring this over here and eventually zip tie it up in the harness. And I like the electrical tape. Put some electrical tape. Come on. Along these, put the wires together because they're all apart, right? So we'll make that nice uh, in a little bit. All right, we're working on the under trailer cross beam, I'll call it light, that's gonna go right there on that beam. So here's our light. We've got the red wire capped off because we said we aren't gonna use that. Black wire is our power on this particular one. It's connected to the brown wire for the trailer wiring harness here. We've extended this harness and then the white one is ground. We gave several feet to this and we've attached it to our fish tape or mechanics wire because we've drilled a hole there in the trailer frame and we fed it through to the end over here as you can see there's a little gap at the bottom of that bracket we're hoping we can pull it out so if we are successful at that um we're gonna win and then we can hook it up to this side trailer rear trailer light to get the power for it. So let's go ahead, let's try to pull this through. Let me adjust this down. One more. Okay, there we go. And we are going to try to fish this wire through and we'll see what happens here. When you do your tape on these, you gotta do it really thin to get through small cracks. Otherwise, it'll jam up and uh, it'll get stuck and you'll pull the tape off. So here we go. I'm going to pull on this end of it and pull it down. And now we are at, over here, we are at this end of it. What we're going to try to pull this out. I can see the tape already. Oh, we're going to get lucky, I think. I like it when we get lucky. Come on. It's tight. I'll give it that. There it goes. We actually got it. Cool. So now, it is a simple matter of coming back here and mounting this. Do a couple holes and mount this to tuck the wire up into that bar. And then uh, we will attach the power on ground over here when we do this trailer light on this side up here at this bracket. Right there, we gotta put the trailer light up here. Next step is gonna be to mount a tail light back there on the left side. Make sure that on the left side, usually is where the license plate light goes, that you obviously get the right light that has the um, elements or the LEDs to light up the license plate. You've got to put a license plate bracket on there as well. So I get this fed through kind of like this. Hole for the wiring. Light goes up and in. Goes on the back of the bracket like that. Got a couple nuts here. And fasten it on. We'll take it over to the trailer. Get my knee cushion here. Oh, come on.
come this way. Back of the trailer here, get our dang wire out of the way. And we will fasten this on the bracket. Like so. Now, it's interesting. Not enough room here, it looks like. Let's see. We need to should have made these studs a little bit longer. Maybe that'll there we go, that works. Alright, so we'll tighten that up in a minute. And we've got our wiring coming through here that'll meet all this that we'll tie in. We'll tie in our center lower running light that we just put in on the center bar in the back of the trailer to this wiring here and we'll ground it up here the screw somewhere on the frame uh, as we did in the front light on the amber lights. So there is at least that new light on the trailer. One more thing we're going to have to work on here is this guide light because this has got to be tied into this light too for illumination, all that wiring down there. These bars, at least on mine, are filled with a, um, how would you say, resin for reinforcement so it's not possible for me to simply drop this wiring down in the tube up here, you know, with the fish tape all the way down this and, and pull it around. This this is a solid piece. I think that's in case somebody actually steps on it so it won't bend, but it's solid up to here, I found. So <laughs> looking at the instructions that came with this, probably a good thing to do. It tells you to feed this wiring down the PCV tube and then out here and then underneath because apparently they acknowledge that that is filled for strength. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And uh, it does tell you, mount this side facing forward because this is your amber for the front of the vehicle. So you will want to, we already put this one in, you will want to make sure that when you do this, and here's an example of how I did the wiring on this side. See, I fed the wiring down this tube by simply taking out this bolt, sliding this piece of PCV off, and then putting the wire down it. But you'll see I have it mounted. There's a screw you put in in the front. So that's the amber side. Back side does not have a screw. But you want to make sure that you have this, you know, there's a divider in here to separate the red from the from the amber and you want to make sure it's not cocked that way or this way that it's you know straight correctly positioned on this post so when you're going on the highway somebody doesn't see red halfway through where an amber should be you know just make sure you get that good and straight and the way I did it was I made sure that that screw was pointing straight at me forward down this pipe uh, towards the front of the vehicle to assure that they only see the amber so we'll get this thing fed in here in a second down the other pipe and then we'll tie the wiring together. So we're getting close here guys. Uh, what I've got is my test harness pigtail plugged into the trailer. And it's just a bare wire end so I can hook up a small 2 amp battery charger to it. I got the ground hooked up to the white. I've got the positive right now hooked up to the um, running lights need that off of there don't touch and then we got it up here a little old time to a amp battery charger and i just want to look at the running lights what i've done so far there's one now the other thing is too is you're gonna see a lot of wiring hanging here the last thing i do after everything is done is tie that back up or tuck it back in the frame because you never know if you're going to have a problem or not so this is the initial test of what we've got so far. We still have a couple amber lights to put in farther down this frame rail, but front amber light, right hand side, 
we've got the guide post amber blazing away going that's forward of the boat then on the rear side we have the uh, red now we weren't able to put in that extra little red light I wanted to there because if you remember back uh, a little bit ago I said that thing's full solid that's not a hollow tube so I think with this we're going to be okay. I think there's enough markings back here and we've added the under uh, carriage light as well on the lower bar. So there's our marker lights for the right side, the center light down the middle of the trailer now, and then the left marker lights. And then of course uh, the left rear guide post and the front amber going forward towards the tongue of the trailer and we come down here and we've got another amber on the front of the trailer replacing the original old amber so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up these wires and uh, we're going to run uh, let's see here let's run the left side turn and brake all right, I've disconnected the brown running light wire to the positive, and now I'm running the yellow left turn signal and or brake light. So let's go back here and see if we wired it correctly. Everything else is off, which it should be. Let's see if we got a left hand side light on. I think we do. And yes, we do. And it's noticeably brighter than the running light. So now we'll go back. And we'll check the right side here, doing the same thing. We'll disconnect the yellow and connect the green. And at least what I know, what I've done so far is working correctly. Okay, so the left yellow turn and brake is disconnected. The right side turn and brake green is now connected. Again, running lights are off. And it looks like we have a right hand brake light with no side marker light, which is what we want. So, looks like our wiring so far is correct. Now you can do this by simply hooking up to a vehicle. I find it easier with a single car driveway, many boats and trailers, simply to use the harness and the two amp little battery trickle charger to check this out. But you can do the same thing by just hooking your vehicle up to this. So now what we'll do is we'll finish this up by getting one more amber light in on each side of the trailer. Down somewhere around in here. And that's going to be kind of dependent on where I find holes in the underbelly of this trailer because that's a square box frame. I know there's a couple. I would like to try to get it back here towards the wheel as far as possible because that's a long distance from here. All the way up to this front one so what we'll have to do is if I can find the hole is snake up in there with a uh, pick kind of like a hooked pick and kind of gently grab around till I find the wiring going the back of the trailer pull it through the hole make our connection and then mount the light on each side All right, I was mistaken. There are no holes underneath this frame in this spot. They were farther down. So what I had to do was drill a hole through the frame. As if you can see through there, I don't know if you can. I drilled a hole clear through, maybe you can. Clear through the other side, see it? So what I'm gonna do, or what I did, I used a dental pick and I came in here to the hole and I pulled out the harness. So I'm gonna have to do this on the other side as well. So we gotta pick up the brown wire here to power our amber light on the side. Then we're going to insert through the hole in the back a ground wire through the frame out to this side that will connect to the light. And then we will use one of our wonderful tech screws on the back side of this frame to lock it into place with this eye for grounding it. All right. <clears throat> so we got all of our lights in and uh, working. There's the front one we just replaced with an amber right there. The one we drilled the hole for on the right side there. 
and pull the wire in through and got that one hooked up. Our guide post lights are working great. Let's walk to the back here. Reverse angle of the guide post light. Yep. Then we come down here and our underbelly and tail lights are working well. Come back up the left side of the boat. Rear guide post light there. And the opposite side, forward guide post light. Then down here, we did drill another hole, pull the wiring through and got ourselves a new light there in front of the wheel assembly, which is right there. And then back up in front, we got that new amber end on this side as well. So our next project is uh, going to be working on the transom. And uh, take a couple weeks, we'll get some videos out. And uh, you know, the transom is supposed to be the strongest part of the boat. This could require a complete wood replacement because this is definitely not the strongest part of the boat anymore. So this will be a fun project. It's gonna take a lot of work, but it can be done and we will show you how to do it. And she will, once again, this is the big issue before we go forward with the rest of rebuild is getting this transom fixed. So until then, this is Captain Carl Birdside from Thumbs Up Charter Services. If you'd like to go for a charter, call us 810-513-6073. Visit us on the web at thumbsupcharter.com. Visit us on Google at Thumbs Up Charter Services in Seawing, Michigan, or Bayport. That's two words, Bay and Port, Michigan. On Facebook at Thumbs Up Charter Services. Sit, come over and say hi to us. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, folks, keep those lines tight. And remember, at Thumbs Up Charter Services, we are wild for walleye.